Hi, it's me back again with another Battletech painting video. I got tired of overthinking of how I'm going to paint my Secession Wars box set, and my second case of Battletech miniatures has just come in the mail. No, I'm not halfway through the first box. No, no, that's not a problem is that was that a problem i mean I'm, what do you think i'm doing procrastinate i'm six snipes today painting a miniature i have literally never heard of this is the a and h4 annihilator let's get painting this is the battletech wolf dragoons assault star force pack by gallus game labs opening up this box you'll find the contents being key mechs from the legendary wolf's dragoons mercenary organization some of which while belonging in the secession wars to a loose extent are rather exotic this is because the dragoons find their origins as a secretive ploy to infiltrate key military command and structures of the inner sphere as hired mercenaries to learn everything they can about the way they wage war as a precursor to the infamous clan invasion that would wreak utter havoc all the way from the outermost rim to the doorstep of Terra. Because of their clanner origins, the dragoons have access to patterns of mech ancient and long considered lost to time, as well as newer patterns of clan specified mechs such as mad cats. Basically, if you want to be a clanner but not clanner and switching sides more than Italy during any given world war sounds cool to you, this is a great box. Especially if you like rare mechs, because while mechs like the rifleman, archer, and mad Cat are legendary enough to make their way into just about every box set, this is the only kit you'll ever find the Annihilator, a suitably fitting addition to an incredibly rare, highly advanced piece of lost tech dating back to the Star League Civil War era, and largely lost to the great exodus of General Kerensky when he took the remainder of the SLDF into the deep space regions where they would eventually evolve into the clans. I had to look all this up because to me, this is some oddly misshapen pot-bellied looking fellow with big guns and bigger <laughs> stompy feet. I initially decided to paint him first because I wanted to paint my least favorite, get it out of the way and then maybe move on to things I like more. However, in earnesty, looking at the side and rear profile, I really do like the heavy duty but futuristic aesthetic of this mech, sleek and shaped where others are harsh, angled, and rugged. I bring all this up because with more uncommon models to see such as this, their obscurity generally means exclusivity to a singular handful of factions. In this case, a great house such as Davian or Kurita could only dream of having any annihilators they were all swept away centuries ago, and most don't even possess records of such an underutilized design. But at the same time, I don't like the color scheme of the wolf's dragoons, and at the end of the day, I'm just not a furry. So if not them, who would possess such a sufficiently advanced and ancient battle mech otherwise lost to time and gone from memory? Good question! As with many of my other mechs, I started with a coat of Vallejo model color sky gray. I'm fast learning this paint is really not great for airbrushes, no matter how you thin it. I thought it was pressure issues, but no, it, re it really just is the pits. And I had some very frustrating troubleshooting getting this to coat even sort of okay. Rather than following up with an actual color like red or blue, I have opted to make this into a largely grayscale scheme, with the end product hopefully being a bright, near white finish like clean, brand new, and well maintained armor on an otherwise ancestral relic. Consequently, the immediate next step is a nice coat of Nuln oil for a recess wash. This being an assault mech, the heaviest mech class weighing in at 80 tons or higher, and one of the heaviest patterns to exist within the class at that, the miniature is consequently big chonky and full of lots of big crevices and details. The wash does very well to pick up these details and bring them in a good amount of definition, but with so much real estate that I was working with, I had to go back and get some parts that I missed, like the underside of the pilot canopy and the interior halves of the gun arms. Allowing time for this to dry, we get this detailed contrast that's a little too dark for what I'm going for, so I immediately put some more sky gray down and proceed to give the model a good heavy dry brush, bringing all the edges and sides back to a good level of brightness against the dark recessed features. I did a copious amount of dry brushing with just the sky gray and then even further took this cheap sponge brush that you might remember eating in preschool and used it to lightly sponge on some low effort dusting and pock marks onto the metal. Mixing more or sky gray now with some Vallejo model color cold white, I proceed to go marginally less thoroughly with an even brighter highlight, providing a very nice powdery matte texture finish as if a factory gray Cerakote is scratched and weathered ever so slightly to a brighter white marbled appearance. Now that I see it is ready for detail painting, I first hit it with an airbrushing of Vallejo matte varnish to ensure my work in so far is protected. Now I want certain areas darker, but I don't want full black, so I compromise by mixing Vallejo model color black with once again sky gray to achieve a rather flat charcoal hue and adding another drop of contrast medium to sufficiently thin the paint. Going in on more inconspicuous and easily fixable details first to ensure I like how it looks, I worked on the webbing of his froggy lizard ass feet and then the joints of his legs and then moving into the top panel with his weapon arms and it is at this exact point you can see me realize I didn't get the same panel on the other arm. It's... 
it's okay, I'll fix it. I got these little stripes on the front and back of his head, this cylindrical looking thing on his back, and these rear armor plates for the legs, and finally, little bits on the shoulders and chest, and called it a day. Now, using Vallejo Model Air Metallic Silver RLM-01, I got, frankly, more details than what really mattered. What counts on mechs is the guns, which are located in both the chest and arms here, as well as the parts that look like they move a lot, like these pistons on the back of the legs, and finally, and most importantly, pieces you decide look cool. I would like to highlight these little squares lining the crown of his head and the antenna looking knobs on the back. Fun fact, it is common knowledge that with much of the original designs of Battletech taking <clears throat> inspiration from anime mecha that the annihilator is almost certainly built in direct reference to mecha godzilla with a unique lore variant even being called gaussilla in direct reference and just like tech 9 you can guess exactly what that guy's packing after popping open the pot and using more null oil i have this very nice look and the only real thing i have left to do is to put a little bit of color on him i ended up having to go back with the gray and dry brush to fix the mispainted panel but not a big deal breaking out the cold white once more i'm going to begin coating the case and ammunition units on either arm which likely hold ammunition for the auto cannons and what appear to be some power cell or reactor cores directly behind the laser guns. Finally, choosing another striped plate on the back of his neck, this being white, does require a few coats. Mixing some Vallejo model colors scarlet and flat yellow with about four times yellow to red, we get a nice orange which is much more opaque and will now register much better on a roughly white prepped surface. I am going to continue adding yellow and adding coats until the hue gets oranger and oranger until it is a nice burnt yellow aesthetic with orange towards the edges and yellow towards the center. Finally, just using pure yellow towards the middle of all these surfaces, making for a caution yellow aesthetic to the power cores and highly volatile ammunition storage located on the highly vulnerable rear arc of this piece. Now before we let that yellow dry, we're going to take out my Vallejo Model Color Panzer Series Intermediate Green and mix it together. This makes a sort of neon green looking paint, which will dot on top of what we first coat with regular green, then the neon towards the middle, and on all four of the laser batteries. This gives the appearance of glowing laser ports ready to ice a fool. Coming back with just the smallest amount of white, we're going to use it to coat the little windows towards the underside of his head and come in with the fantasy color ma magic color game color 72.019 as well. <clears throat> or night blue and give it a coat. It's rather transparent. I didn't like it when I tried it and got Prussian blue instead for my Davion mechs, but it's still okay for windows because of this transparency. We're also gonna mix it with a little white and dot the interiors to highlight them and call that good. Last and never ever least, the hard part is mixing some black and some medium and then we're gonna get the fine detail brush out because even the normal detail wasn't in cutting it. And we're gonna do some writing on this gun arm, labeling the laser gun, the case ammunition module, the AC-10, on the other side, and finally, writing the shorthand designation for this piece, the A and the H for Annihilator. Now, all we gotta do is look at it. I very much like how this Wadley boy turned out. He's very much looking forward to his turn on the Xbox, seriously, he looks dumb, but also badass and intimidating being far larger than any of my other mechs painted to date. I really do like the weathered but relatively unmolested gray finish on him. It's very militaristic and secretive, lacking in any markings to designate whom or what has sent this harbinger of death and mass destruction. I do wonder what faction would have in their vast vaults such a rare specimen of Star League era war gear so guarded by General Kerensky and his ilk. Actually, I don't know, and maybe you lore buffs can make a pretty good guess from the color scheme and reasoning. Maybe tune in to see when I get a six pack of mechs belonging to this faction, particularly in painting them up for my own ultra secret army. Until then, or until next time, I've been Six Snipes. Be sure to push buttons, and I'm gonna go use this guy to step on some planner infantry because ultimately it's funny and it's fitting.